Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look as well as ranking from worst to best every single figure that has so far been released as part of the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen studio series toy line. Now before we kick start with the video as always I'd really appreciate it if you guys could all drop a like and of course be sure to comment below and let me know your thoughts on my own personal ranking and how you guys would rank them in your own collection. Now Transformers 2 has undeniably got to be one of the biggest movies that Michael Bay had ever produced for the Transformers live action films and with that came an enormous toy line. Way back in the day 2009 they gave us some stellar figures. So suffice to say when Hasbro made the choice to actually remake some of these characters in the studio series toy line they definitely had their work cut out and overall I think they absolutely delivered. Some of these figures that I'll be mentioning and featuring on this list have got to be some of my favorite live action movie figures of all time. Now I think besides some of my end of year ranking videos this has got to be one of the biggest lists that I've ever comprised so I'll try my absolute best to keep my thoughts as concise as possible so that we can very swiftly move up the ranks and we may as well kickstart things off by taking a look at the worst entry and it's undeniably got to be the Constructicon Deluxe Class Scrap Metal. Now the main reason why I dislike this character is because when compared to some of the other Bayformers I just think design wise he falls very short. I don't think he's very inspired, he looks kind of basic and boring and when put next to some of the other Constructicons is nowhere near as alien looking. He really does look to me as if he's been ripped directly out of the G1 continuity. I just don't think there's anything that particularly stands out about his design. Just as a figure, he's pretty plain and boring. He doesn't really include any form of weaponry besides some stupid shield which slaps onto the side. And the Constructicon mode itself is decent, but much like in the film, I think this figure is good for one reason and one reason only, and that's for parts. Had he not been a part of Constructicon Devastator, I probably wouldn't have picked him up. And if I had, then he would have been very quickly put into storage. So yeah, overall, definitely not a fan of the design of this guy but just in terms of a deluxe figure it's well made it's decently poseable and I guess if you just want more Decepticon troops to add to your collection then it's not too bad as we take a look at the next worst pick it's got to be the Revenge of the Fallen Soundwave I was so displeased when this guy got released I really didn't think he was an improvement at all and if anything was a downgrade when in comparison to the amazing figure that we saw released way back in 2009 which isn't the case for the majority of these figures nine times out of ten they are a marked improvement when in comparison to their predecessor but this version of Soundwave just looked pathetic. I thought that satellite mode was a weak attempt to recreate what we actually saw in the film. It had nowhere near as many individual segments sticking off to the sides like we saw with that original 2009 release. I thought it looked incredibly bland. The only thing that it had going for it at least in my opinion was the inclusion of a transparent blue stand which you could utilize with some other figures and as far as its individual robot mode was concerned I just think much like scrap metal it looked super uninspired. I know he never really transformed in the movie and Hasbro just had to give him some form of robot mode but yeah I've seen them definitely do better in regards to concept characters and overall the satellite mode which actually did appear in the movie I just don't think they did a great job in replicating it and then that's when we move on to our next pick which is in fact the Revenge of the Fallen Starscream. Now I know there'll be some of you guys out there wondering as to why I've decided to rank him so lowly on the list and it's simply down to the fact that I think Hasbro got lazy with this guy. They basically took the Dark and the Moon Deluxe which at the time of this release I believe came out out roughly seven to eight years prior and they basically just upscaled it and added a few enhancements to kind of make it look slightly more accurate and overall it's not a bad figure but when you compare it to the likes of say sideways side swipe it really wasn't a marked improvement in my opinion from certain angles it appeared to be very flat it's actually quite a blocky figure as well articulation wise at least personally for me especially when I was shooting this video I found it to be very blocky and kind of outdated it doesn't have any form of waist rotation the arm range I don't think is the best and the legs well you may as well just give up completely as there really isn't much you can do with those at all so yeah sadly I'm not a huge fan of this Starscream and despite the tattoo version being undeniably better in terms of design when in comparison to the 2007 release I don't think they got that shade of beige spot on to what we actually saw in the film so I'm definitely hoping for a version 2.0 of this guy to come out in the future but it did come with a pretty decent buzzsaw and for a mainline Starscream it was probably one of the best besides being easily dethroned by the masterpiece and even the hunt for the Decepticons leader. And then we turn to another Constructicon, that being Hightower. Now, unlike Scrap Metal, I thought the design for this guy was awesome. And I do believe this is one of the few Constructicons that is primarily based and is solely based on concept art. And overall, I think they did a really nice job. The only reason why he's ranked so lowly is because due to his abstract design, he can be a little difficult to pose. And if anything, it's more of just a stand-in on your shelf. You can't actually have fun with this guy. You can't mess around with him too much due to the weird nature of his body. 
body, and overall, I just don't think he's that enjoyable. Much like Scrap Metal, had this guy not been intended for the combined mode, he more than likely would have been put into storage, but design-wise, I do still think he's pretty nicely done. And then we turn to the RC triplets. Now, this was really and truly the first time that we had seen core class scaled figures released into this line, and for the longest time, I never actually thought that we would see these characters. They were super sore in the movie, they didn't really have a significant role, but hey and behold, Hasbro actually released them, I believe, towards the tail end of 2019, and I actually thought they were pretty decent for what they were. Now, granted, if they were to be released in 2022, they'd no doubt receive individual treatment in the core class, and I think overall, that probably would have benefited them, as considering they were three figures restricted to the deluxe class price point, there were certainly some corners cut, and overall, I just find them to be very fiddly. You can't really do much with them in terms of posability, much like Hightower and Scrap Metal. I do just find them to kind of be cast members that I just throw on the shelf. I don't actually ever really pick them up and mess around with them just as they're not that enjoyable and apparently there is supposed to be a hidden combined mode amongst all three of these which Hasbro never officially revealed much like they never revealed the original deluxe triplet combined mode way back in the day. I have no idea as to why they didn't as they definitely did engineer it as there are some pegs on these figures which have no meaning in either robot mode or in their vehicle mode so maybe one day if they do actually get their act together and release those instructions perhaps these figures will be slightly more enjoyable but yeah overall definitely not the funnest releases but I guess we needed them in order to complete our Autobot cast and then we turn to our first Optimus Prime on the list and I believe the only Optimus Prime actually that being the Revenge of the Fallen 05 version. Now when this was first unveiled I actually really liked the way it looked. I thought it was a lot more streamlined and slender when in comparison to any of the figures that we'd really seen for the last night and especially Dark the Moon. I didn't think it beat the hunt for the Decepticons Voyager but overall it was a pretty nice update on the character but it definitely had its flaws and it was sad to see that a couple of months down the line Hasbro basically released the superior version that being SS32 and it really did beg the question as to why they even bothered with this guy if that 32 version was always on the horizon as this really did feel as if it was almost the beta version and that newer release was what they always intended to be the definitive version of Prime so not too sure how this figure came to be overall I actually still really like it though I think it poses amazing it actually came with a dual blade which I thought was a massive plus and transformation wasn't too difficult and it resulted in a decent truck mode but I do think it was slightly too small in robot mode however I really liked the color scheme I thought the darker gun metal over the brighter color scheme that we saw for 32 at least in my opinion was ever so slightly better then we turn to our next pick and it is yet again another Constructicon that being Mixmaster now this is a very similar situation to the Revenge of the Fallen Satellite Soundwave I don't think this figure is that much of an upgrade over its counterpart now why this figure is ranked higher on the list than Soundwave is simply down to the fact that unlike his original version this is actually a triple changer this figure needed to have the head of Devastator embedded in the robot mode so I can kind of forgive as to why perhaps it's not that much of an upgrade when in comparison to the original 2009 version which was simply just a robot a truck and you could fold it up into some form of cannon this guy had to do all three of the proper modes the truck the robot and the combined mode and overall I think it did a decent job my only critique with it would be that I do wish they found a better placement for some of the kibble on the back but considering it holsters Devastator's head I really don't think there was much they could do with it and I do wish that much like the original version those riot shields that were formed out of the cement drum were on ball joints so that they could have recreated the shield look that we see in the video game but overall it's a really nice Decepticon and for those who actually want Constructicons that have robot modes that combine to Devastator it was a decent release and then we turn to Jolt which is actually one of the newest entries onto the list at least for the Autobot cast and this guy was definitely a marked improvement when in comparison to his original version this was so much more accurate it literally looked almost dead on to the CGI render which up until very recently none of us truly knew how it looked and I think they did a really good job the only places where I think this figure falls slightly short would have to be in regards to articulation it is so difficult to actually get him into any form of pose as much like Starscream he has some pretty outdated articulation he merely has ball joints in the shoulders which sadly can't actually hold up the weight of his electric whips and that whips themselves are not detailed that well they're basically just chopsticks so I also do wish that they could have been better done and the ankle articulation is garbage you really cannot get this figure into any form of dynamic pose but as far as the silver paint and mechanical detail goes I think it looks excellent 
Next up, we have the Constructicon Overload, which is a complete concept character. We never saw this guy in the Revenge of the Fallen movie, and when he was actually released, I thought that Devcon was almost certainly on the cards. However, sadly, two years after his release, we haven't seen any official confirmation that we are going to be seeing more concept characters introduced into the line, but I thought they did a good job with this figure. I thought design-wise, he was very up there with some of the other Decepticons from that Bay film. Unlike Scrap Metal, he had all of those alien attributes that we had become familiar with 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 the Constructicons such as that insectoid head and those weird gangly arms I really did think he looked awesome the only reason why he's ranked slightly lower on the list is because much like Mixmaster considering he's a Constructicon there were some corners cut and overall I just think his robot mode can be slightly difficult to pose around most noticeably would be the lack of ratchet joints in the hips meaning that he does have a tendency to kind of split right down the middle but overall a pretty nicely done figure and then we turn to our first and only Bumblebee from Revenge of the Fallen and overall I think this also is a really nice figure. I think out of all of the main trilogy movie Bumblebees that we've seen for the studio series, this is probably my favourite, even being better than Dark of the Moon. I love the colour scheme on this. The darker orange is amazing. The battle mask actually really suits this mould in my opinion, and he included Sandwich Wiki. Whilst that wasn't a great accessory, it was a nice inclusion. It was a character that we needed for the studio series, and overall I think this guy looks great. Bumblebee's awesome. The mould's awesome. The Camaro looked fantastic. The remoulded pieces that they gave him were wicked, but I do just wish they took it slightly further and could have remolded the entire Camaro to make him dead on accurate to how he appeared in the film. Moving into the midway point, here we have the leader class Constructicon Scavenger. Now this was a character that was also in a dire need of an upgrade. The original 2009 figure was decent, but it suffered from something that many of those older figures did, and that was that it was way out of scale. This new leader class figure made him a lot bigger, sadly not 100% to scale. I do know very early on Hasbro had plans to make him a commander, but at the very last minute decided to scrap that and just stick to leader. I imagine that was a business decision. Perhaps they didn't think a Commander Scavenger would sell as well as the likes of Motormaster, Rodimus, Jetfire and Skylinks etc. But still, this was a really well done leader. Unlike some of the other Constructicons, the combined mode really didn't have an impact on the robot mode at all. And if anything, just kind of compromised the look of the construction mode. But personally, since my review, I've never transformed him. I think the robot mode looks absolutely fantastic on this guy. I am just still holding out hope that we can eventually see a Demolisher Reaper as I just think it would be so cool to really conclude and finish off that Decepticon Shanghai battle. And talking of the Shanghai battle, the next character is of course the Revenge of the Fallen Sideswipe. Now if you've watched any of my past ranking videos, you guys all know my thoughts on this figure. I think it is awesome. Undeniably one of the best Sideswipe releases that we have ever seen officially. The robot mode looks killer. Considering this was a remold of the Dark of the Moon version, I think they did a fantastic job. That Corvette Stingray alt mode looks incredible and this figure was actually painted a lot better when in comparison to its original release and surprisingly it came with all of the weapons the two blades the two cannons overall a very very nicely done figure by far one of my favorite entries into studio series if i were to be critical it's that they didn't find a way to give him an ankle pivot that would have been so cool definitely would have been the icing on the cake but as it stands an amazing release and talking of figures of which were massively upgraded here we have the constructicon long haul if you compare this studio series version to the original 2009 release they really look like completely different characters. This version was a lot more chunky, a lot stubbier, a lot fatter when in comparison to that original version and overall was just so much more movie accurate. The head sculpt was astonishing. Actually filming this video, I haven't picked this guy up in quite some time. I was blown away. The attention to detail that the design team were able to pack into this guy was next level. He looked incredible. I think they got his proportions down to a T. The combined mode did not actually compromise any of his alt modes. I think the robot, the truck mode looks great and even the foot mode actually looks really decent. Overall, Overall, it's a great figure. If I were to be critical, it's that due to the nature of the design, it can be a little difficult to get him into any pose, which isn't just him kind of standing there stomping around. But yeah, really, really cool Constructicon. Love long haul and I'm actually hoping, much like Scavenger, that we can see a repaint of him, perhaps in some Hunt for the Decepticons payload colours. Next up, we have another Shanghai inspired character, that being the recently released Studio Series Sideways. This guy was also a marked improvement when in comparison to his original counterpart. Now, granted, not as complex as the actual CGI design. I imagine it would have just made him way too fiddly, probably a little too fragile in the deluxe scale point. So they did decide to strip him back slightly, make him a little more basic. But even in this basic approach, he came out great. He looks awesome, amazing head sculpt. This is actually a mold that I hope they use for perhaps a barricade version 2.0 of in the future. Pretty decent articulation. I do wish he could have had some proper ankle pivot, especially considering that those feet are on ball joints, but overall looks great. Sadly, they couldn't get the license for Audi, but that 
was something that they weren't able to do back in 2009. Overall, this guy's a wicked looking release, stands a lot better in comparison to his original version, has better proportions, better build quality in my opinion, just a great looking figure. And then we turn to some of my favourite Constructicons, those being both Rampage and Skipjack. Now I've decided to include both of these in the same spot, just as they are identical to one another besides in regards to colour scheme, and if I did have a preference between the two, it would be Rampage. I just think the red looks super aggressive, super cool, and really does help some of those details pop, but great figures, much like some of the other ones on this list, a marked improvement over the original counterpart. I also don't think that his mode was in fact actually compromised due to the combined mode, the robot, the vehicle mode looks great, and the combined mode, I think he actually has one of the coolest combined limbs, if I'm going to be honest. That foot mode looks awesome, and I also like the Skipjack replaying. It of course does complete the yellow leg of Devastator. If I had critiques with this guy, and the reason why he's not slightly higher on the list, it would be in regards to articulation. The arms are so limited, and I know that's due to the nature of the design, but I'm almost certain they could have found a way to have at least packed an elbow joint in there. And then we turn it to another Constructicon, which is actually my favourite out of the entire lineup. A couple of years later after his release, approximately two years, he has taken the top spot, and it is that of Scrapper. This guy looks great. Now, I don't believe we ever actually got a Scrapper figure way back in 2009, and this figure just absolutely looked incredible. It looks so accurate to the very brief appearance that we saw of him in the movie. It had the mace weapon that was attached to the arm, as well as that scoop thing that he used in order to try and take down Sam and Michaela with. I think he had a great construct gun mode, and much like Rampage, really had a super cool looking combined mode. So yeah, overall, this guy also was awesome, and like I said, one of my favorite construct guns. He's really well done. And then we turn to Megatron. Now, much like Skipjack and Rampage, I've decided to include both the regular version of Megatron and the Battle Damage variant in the same spot, just as they're very similar to one another. It is just that one has a different head sculpt and a slightly different color deco, but both of these are awesome. I think out of all of the Megatrons that we've seen from the Studio Series line, including Galvatron, this is by far the best. This guy looks so accurate to the movie. It was a much needed upgrade over both the original leader and Voyager figure. I thought they got the proportions down to a T in regards to the robot mode. The tank mode looked decent. The only thing it was missing were kind of the wings that would create it, that almost triple changing flying tank jet thing. But overall, a fantastic looking figure. Articulation was good. The only area where I thought the regular version was lacking would be in regards to paint. But that was something that the Battle Damage Deco release kind of fixed. Although I am hoping we can see a full out metallic version of this guy in the premium finish lineup. And then the next figure, the final three that we've got on this list, it has to go to Grindor. Now this figure would have been higher up on the list had this not been a remold slash repaint. This right here is a great figure. I think as far as the entire Studio Series lineup is concerned, it's got to be up there with being one of the best. The robot mode looks super accurate to how he appeared in the movie, and boy, did he cause for such an epic CG sequence. Not to forget that he was also based on the Studio Series Blackout, which to begin with was an amazing release, but this time with Grindor, they actually gave him proper, fully articulated hands, which at least for me, were just the icing on the cake as far as the robot mode goes. I actually don't think the helicopter mode looks too bad, Bad. Of course, it has been undeniably defeated by the movie masterpiece rendition, but for a budget mainline leader, this is a fantastic figure, looks great in robot mode. I do wish it was slightly bigger in terms of scale, much like Scavenger, and it also included a Ravage, which sadly wasn't the best, but I imagine we'll hopefully see an updated version of that character in the core class in the near future. So yeah, overall Grindor, terrific release, by far one of the coolest SS figures, and probably one of the most accurate ones that we've seen to date, which moves us now onto the second to last pick and it is of course the studio series Jetfire or as I have him shown here Jet Power Prime. This is an amazing release. Now the original 2009 version was already terrific to begin with but what this version did much like the previous releases was just improve upon what Hasbro already gave us back in the day and my goodness did they improve upon this. I actually think that once we do conclude the MPM lineup for 2007 we are in a good chance of seeing a movie masterpiece figure for Jetfire and I do think that it may adapt a very similar method to what we saw with the MPM blackout, that being taking the Studio Series version as the main basis and just expanding off that as the SS Jetfire is just awesome. The robot mode proportions are wicked. He actually came with the axe, unlike the original 2009 version. The articulation is vastly superior. Granted, he doesn't have the AAA battery pack, which the original version did, but I think that just really helped it to streamline that mid torso, get the angular proportions down to a T. I think the bot mode looks great. The jet mode, surprisingly, is super clean. 
despite how many panels that Jetfire actually has. And this version could actually break apart almost parts form into loads of different pieces and be armored up with Optimus Prime to create Jet Power Optimus Prime. And that is just so sick in my opinion. I think that has got to be one of the coolest gimmicks we've seen for the studio series. Granted, the combined mode without the DNA upgrade components wasn't the best. I still think it's actually a little more accurate when in comparison to the original 2009 version. And if you do pick up the DNA design kit, my goodness, it's literally a chef's kiss. It looks incredible. So yeah, Jetfire is definitely more than worthy of second place on this Revenge of the Fallen ranking, leaving only one. That has got to be the best Studio Series ROTF figure of all time. It is the Constructicon Devastator. This thing is a point in time that the fans of the live action movies will never forget. The day that this guy was announced, I believe, at MCM London Comic Con, it just absolutely blew my mind. I would never in my wildest dreams have thought that Hasbro would have once again approached the Michael Bay Devastator, but they did. And for the most part, I think it turned out really nicely done. Now, granted, with the DNA design components, it looks a heck of a lot better especially to create that four-legged crawling pose but just as its own individual release it's really nicely done the biggest thing that this figure improved upon when in comparison to the original 2009 supreme class version was that the constructicons not only had vehicle and combined modes but they also had singular robot modes and considering each of them were individually released they all had their own individual set budgets and weren't just one massive electronic box set it really did allow hasbro to go all out and overall just create a fantastic representation of the character now the combined mode definitely isn't without its flaws. I do wish the head was a little bigger, I wish the articulation was better, and they really should have designed this figure exactly how the original concept image of the Studio Series Devastator was shown off in October of 2018, that being more hunched over as seen in the movie. But still, it wasn't a bad figure. You could definitely work around it not being able to officially pull off the four-legged pose, and overall it's one of my favourite Studio Series figures. I really do think it's a very ambitious project for Hasbro to approach, and I am hoping that we can once again see another Studio series combiner in the future hopefully an ss86 version of devastator so with all that being said that pretty much concludes my entire ranking video for every single revenge of the fallen studio series figure that has so far been released i'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below do you guys agree with my pick i think the cast is almost complete all we really need now are the ice cream twins the regular version of skids and mudflap and the fallen which i imagine we'll have in a couple of months time the fallen is definitely coming in 2022 it is just a matter of when not if i thank you guys all so much for watching and until my next video i'll see you then thanks for watching